still at the ruins near uh, the West Fork of the Salt Creek. And I'm up to about 15 different rooms in this set of ruins. It's amazing. There's that right here, overlooking the river. There's a th few rooms there. Back over this way along this wall, there's probably another three or four. There's two more around the corner. And then probably the most hidden one. This guy I just spotted up here in the dark. Almost looks prehistoric out there for some reason. Climbing down out of the ruins and I found uh, what I believe is a piece of pottery. And I'd love to take it as a souvenir, but I'm going to leave it. Well, with a little more looking, just in the same area, found quite a few pieces of pottery. It's funny, once your eye zones in on it, uh, kind of like petrified wood, it's fairly easy to find. For instance, how about that? You see these guys? Take it down. Boy, got some design on it and everything. Turn this guy over, make him a little harder for someone else to find. That's where I need to be, way up around the bend to my camp. Okay, here we go. It started to rain a little bit. The upper jump of Salt Creek. Sun is going down, but I spotted more uh, ruins and petroglyphs, so I'm gonna have to go up and check them out. Nice pictographs. Oh wow, you can see the grinding stone, or the impression left by the grinding stone, I should say. I'm about to operate on my little pinky toe. That's a massive blister, and um, I can't have that. Time to clean it up and uh, make it better. If I'd only known this was just a short ways up from camp, I might have taken a bath this morning. Nice. Big pool here. This is the site with the Four Faces pictograph. It's right up there, we'll go take a closer look. And the Four Faces. I'm at the site of the famous pictograph called All-American Man, and here he is. And you can see it's a little bit of a climb to get up to this point. Okay, now I have the pamphlet that was with the guest registry down below. The All-American Man is a red, white, and blue striped shield-bearing pictograph. Recent radiocarbon dating has proven that All-American Man is an authentic pictograph of ancestral Puebloan people. Here at the base of the All-American Man, there was this guest registry. There's my entry. And uh, yeah, it's averaging about one person a week, maybe? One or two a week that seem to make it out here. Just left the side of the All-American Man. One crack in the wall farther up. See, there's more dwellings. An arch spotted on the horizon across from All-American Man. Another arch. This one I think I'm gonna get a little closer to. Day 12, I'm making my way through the upper end of Salt Creek Canyon, headed towards the Abajo Mountains. This could be called the Valley of the Mushroom Rock. They're all over the place. Little ones and big ones. More mushroom rocks. Now we have a mushroom rock with an arch in it. Another cool site. Now this site has all kinds of rubbing stones. Some mud-based storage. These ruins in the distance are known as big ruins. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one. A rim to it. And look at the grinding stones. Another huge collection gallery. Just have to climb up on top of that ridge up there before the sun goes down. Yeah, 
Here's the old Kirk cabin. Kirk was one of the first to try to settle the uh, Salt Creek Basin. And uh, this is where he lived. Let's take a look inside here. Kirk's cabin, you can see Kirk's arch. It's Cathedral Butte. Way up there is where my supplies are hidden. I'd like to spend the night. This is probably the park boundary. Let's see. And it is. All right. For the last uh, 11 days, I've gone from one extreme end of Canyonlands National Park to the other extreme end. Hey, Mr. Shadow, still going strong. I'm getting closer. I'm still making my way up the Monster Hill. It's rough, I'm, uh, but I'm about two thirds way up now. It's not uh, too much farther and I'll be up there and I'll be to my cache and I'll have a good dinner. And uh, if I'm lucky, I'll beat, uh, I'll beat the sun. That's where I came from, way down there. Sun's almost down. I'm still not at the top. It's official now, the sun won. I did not get to the top. All right, I made it. It was an exhausting climb. About uh, 25, 30 minutes after sundown, I made it to the top. So now I just need to go find my caches. I came up in a little different spot than I thought, but I'm pretty sure I know where I am. Right. I see it. Ouch. It looks like it's intact. Look at that. That's my cache. So today I'm headed out, out of Canyon Country, over the ridge, and actually along one of the few uncharted regions of my journey. Uh, or I should say, really, there's just no trail or route. Already quite the change of scenery. And there's my mountain way back, hidden way in behind there. My wash just turned into a huge dry fall and a huge drop, which could be why there's no trail through here. I'm gonna lower my pack down off of this and then down climb the series of rocks. You guys see any of that? All right, I'm down, down safely. Wasn't too bad at all. Just came right down this little chute. There's the dry fall I was at about an hour ago, way up there. And I worked my way over here. That's the point I was able to come down. The high peaks are getting closer. Sundown tonight from the other side of Cathedral Butte. Since I'm outside the uh, National Park, now I can have my own little fire. Hopefully it'll keep all the big bad animals away. Finally to the top of Shea Ridge. Finally, the water is flowing again. Good thing, I, was, I went a long ways without some water. Right into my water bag. Mm-hmm. Mm. Getting closer to the top. It looks like rain back in canyon country. Running into my first snow, which is not promising because I still have uh, about a thousand feet to climb. It's day 13 and uh, I'm exhausted. Climbing the mountain has been rough. I am right at 10,000 feet now and uh, have about another five, 600 feet to go. Now it's raining slash sleeting on me. I want to get over the ridge if I can before it gets too bad. 10,600 feet, it's pretty much snowbank after snowbank. It's not fun. Look at that, told you we were getting up there. Yep, I've made it to the ridge. Woohoo! <laughs> ah, and the sun just popped out as well. I can see a long ways down there. Just as I was laying out all my equipment, it started snowing like you would not believe. Look at this. 
This is crazy. I don't know if you can see all the snow on me, but it's let's get my camera on. Uh oh. Whew. Hope that's the last of the storm. That last gust that you can see over there just came through here and it was cold and dropped a whole bunch more snow. It's still pretty chilly, but I've got a change of clothes. I'm all dry now and uh in theory, it should build up some uh, heat inside this tent, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to endure the night. Um, it's funny, you can see that we're at elevation. The, uh, even my cliff bars have uh, puffed up. All right, signing off. Day 13. Bye. I got up this morning from my camp down there in those trees in the saddle of the mountain and walked up here to the summit. It's an incredible view. So nice. You can see all the way back through canyon country. See Cathedral Butte is the highest point out there on the, the mesas in the foreground. All of Canyon Lands in behind there. All the way up towards where I started my hike 14 days ago. And you can see down towards the city of Blanding. Could actually see city lights last night. First time I've seen that in a long time. My patented on top of the world spin. Thank you. Day 14, I'm leaving my high elevation camp here and I'm headed down the mountain. Uh, should be nice to get to a lower elevation, but there is one steep part with snow that I'm slightly concerned about. Okay, I'm to that stretch I was concerned about. There's a lot of snow. Looks like it stretches all the way around the bend pretty much nonstop, so that's steep. I'm gonna have to just fight my way through it. Okay, I'm slowly but surely making my way along the snowy slopes, trying not to slide down the mountain. Around the bend and snow free we go. Oh, gotta love it. Makes going so much faster and warmer. Across another ridge now I can actually see to the south of the Abajos. There's Mount Linnaeus. And then looking down to Allen Canyon. I believe it's Arch Canyon over to the right. Calm Ridge is way out there on the horizon. Well, I'm not out of the woods yet, but at least I'm off the highest peak. It all looks peaceful up there now, compared to when I was up there just uh, a little over an hour ago. This is the same stream I got some water from up the mountain. Up there is just a trickle though. Well, I don't like this. I know this, uh, there is an area here that is private property, but the road is supposed to be open. One of the rare open nice sections of Allen Canyon. The rest of it is covered in deep, thick overgrowth. Cool little side canyon on the way to Whiskers Draw. I'm leaving the Abajos behind and climbing up to Comb Ridge. Yeah, I made it before dark. I'm now at the edge of Comb Ridge. I'm breaking down camp for the last time. I've uh, traveled right at 170 miles so far on this trip. I have about another five or six to go. And then I'll hit pavement at Highway 95 and it'll be the end of this journey. I'm where the old road used to cut through the uh, comb ridge. Cuts down this gully and then plunges down below. So now I'm right above the big road cut. Getting ready to go down. Just about one more quarter mile and I'll be there. And there she is. Pavement. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that. Okay, here we go. Question. Why did Jamal cross the paved road? Whoa. Because it was his first chance to do so for 176 miles. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> oh boy. Guess how long I've been thinking about that joke? About 15 days. Okay, let's see if we can find uh, the shuttle ride. And that wraps up this edition of Curb Pavement. 176 miles through Utah's Canyonlands. Keep it wild.